so that the observed gaps in the expected impact of the national response could be closed and the gains consolidated. That action was based on the guidelines developed and published by the Presidential Task Force, working in collaboration with, with sub-national entities and key stakeholders. The Presidential Task Force also announced the extension of the lockdown of Kano State due to the need to address the peculiar circumstances that had arisen in that state. During the two weeks extension, the Presidential Task Force evaluated the COVID-19 situation in the country, after which it submitted a report to Mr. President as promised last week. Ladies and gentlemen, despite partnerships, injection of resources and collaboration, the COVID-19 has continued to ravage the world in very many ways. It has also continued to spread and claim casualties. The global figures recorded as at Sunday 31st May 2020 had risen to about 6.4 million confirmed cases with 2.8 million recoveries and about 377,000 fatalities across 216 countries and territories of the world. The global epicenter of the pandemic has shifted from China to Europe, then to the United States of America, and is now showing significant impact in South and Central America. This shift to South America with virtually similar climatic and demographic similarities with Africa is a cause for concern when we consider the fact that earlier projections pointed to Africa as likely to be the worst hit continent by the pandemic. In Africa, confirmed cases stood at 146,000 plus while 64,000 plus cases had recovered and about 4,222 fatalities were recorded as at Sunday, 31st May 2020. Reports have shown that there are lesser number of confirmed cases than expected across the African continent. Countries have continued to record significant daily increases capable of overwhelming our fragile healthcare systems if there is a consistent surge. This calls for caution, planning, multi-sectoral investment in institutional and human capacity, scientific and methodological approach, as well as citizens' commitment to the control of the pandemic. As at midnight on the same day, Sunday 31st, May 2020, Nigeria had recorded and passed the milestone of 1,000 confirmed cases with 10,000, 10, uh, milestone of 10,000 confirmed cases with 10,162 confirmed cases of COVID-19, 3,007 discharges, and 200 and 87, unfortunately, deaths. Significantly, Nigeria recorded 553 new cases on Saturday, the 30th May 2020, representing the highest single-day numbers ever. Nigeria's national response has continued to rely on science, data, experiences drawn from other nations, and consideration of our peculiar environment to address the pandemic, while observing the guidelines issued by the World Health Organization. While reviewing the impact of previous measures and the first phase of the eased lockdown, the Presidential Task Force 
prioritize the following aims. One, ensuring a cohesive, exhaustive, and data-driven policy to guide the opening of the country. Two, putting in place procedures for effective review of the country's reopening policy. Three, mitigating against our health system being overwhelmed by a series of sustained outbreaks. Four, maximizing the impact of non-pharmaceutical interventions on COVID-19 control. And five, minimizing the negative and social effects of the non-pharmaceutical interventions. Similarly, the Presidential Task Force adopted the following guiding principles to ensure that the response is robust and holistic. The first, utilization of data systems to assess risk, measure response performance, and evaluate progress. Two, application of non-pharmaceutical interventions in a measured and step-wise manner, e.g., using two-week intervals to identify adverse effects. And three, narrowing the focus of non-pharmaceutical interventions with significant side effects, e.g., business closures, stay-at-home orders to targeted areas for effective stiffness and impact. Four, development of systems for the protection of the vulnerable groups. And five, prioritizing of risk communication and community engagement with emphasis on community involvement and ownership. And six, encouraging states to fund activities such as contact tracing, sample and data collection, etc., that support the control of COVID-19, thereby generating data to aid decision-making. The Presidential Task Force, in reaching its conclusions and making recommendations for next steps of the response, remain mindful of the following important socioeconomic issues. The first being impact of COVID-19 on the global economy and all national economies. Two, pain and hardship brought about and upon the poor and vulnerable, the aged, the sick, people living with disabilities, and particularly those whose survival depend on their daily earnings. And three, impact of the closure of schools and tertiary institutions. Four, avoidable death of citizens occasioned by the decline in the level of availability of medical facilities to citizens due to closure of medical facilities, rejection of patients by hospitals, and the fear of stigmatization. And five, the level of infection of frontline workers and its implication for the national response. From the economic development, security and social cohesiveness of the perspectives, the Presidential Task Force also worked closely with the Economic Sustainability Committee President, the Central Bank of Nigeria promoting the development of stimulus packages for different categories of SMEs, farmers, businesses, etc. And with the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development working to enlarge the database of some of the social intervention programs for inclusiveness and also interventions in the areas of palliatives. Four, the Federal Minister of Labor and Employment charged with the mandate to organize the Special Public Works Intervention capable of employing 1,000 youth from each of the 774 local governments in the country. With also the Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development on the mobilization and technical support to farmers for the planting season, as well as unrestricted movement of food and other agricultural produce. 
with the Federal Ministry of Education for the development of guidelines and protocols for safe reopening of our schools. And with the security agencies, even this morning, for the enforcement and protection of lives and properties. We also engage with the professional bodies, civil society organizations, the labor sector, trade associations, religious and traditional rulers. Went further to interface with the Nigerian Governance Forum and the leadership and membership of the National Assembly. The Presidential Task Force has taken into consideration the advisory of the World Health Organization on the need to do the following when planning to ease a lockdown. The first being to balance lives and livelihoods, and the second to follow a slow and phased approach that is data-driven. Third, apply public health measures in every community and at every phase of the response, i.e. surveillance, case finding, testing, isolation, tracing, and quarantining contacts. And four, evaluating the economic and social aspects of the society, which will play a role in progressing or hindering any efforts for the response. It is the consideration of the Presidential Task Force that while Nigeria's confirmed cases have increased in the period under review, the following factors should inspire confidence in the response. The first being majority of the confirmed cases are in a handful of local governments in the country. Two, 20 out of the 774 local governments nationwide account for 60% of the cases. And there is a map attached to my speech which you would have when it is mailed out. There is an opportunity to concentrate efforts in these high burden areas. And four, federal agencies and state governments are working together on the promotion and utilization of guidelines on case management, e.g. home care for relatively well patients. And five, there is increased capacity to test, detect, trace those infected with the virus. As of today, we have 29 testing laboratories that have been activated with Bauchi being the latest addition while the test count nationwide has exceeded 60,000. And seven, there's a shift in focus to community engagement and enhanced risk communication. Notwithstanding the foregoing, the Presidential Task Force considered it necessary to reinstate or to restate to Nigerians that one, Nigeria has not reached the peak of confirmed cases yet. Two, the battle against COVID-19 is a long-term one. Three, Nigeria should pursue a strategy that the sustainable growth of the, of, the, of, the, of the spread of the disease. Four, risk communication and community engagement should remain top priority. Five, precision approach to containment and management should be adopted, particularly dealing with the 20 high burden local governments. Based on the overall assessment, including available data on the public health consideration and resultant economic impact, the Presidential Task Force is of the opinion that Nigeria is ready to allow science and data determine how cautious advancement into the second phase of the eased lockdown for a period of four weeks. After considering all the factors mentioned above, the Presidential Task Force submitted its recommendations and the President has approved the following for implementation over the next four weeks, spanning from tomorrow, the 2nd of June, to 29th June, 
2020 subject to review. One, a cautious advance into the second phase of the national response to COVID-19. Two, application of science and data to guide the targeting of areas of ongoing high transmission of COVID-19 in the country. Three, mobilization of all resources at state and local government levels to create public awareness on COVID-19 and improve compliance with non-pharmaceutical interventions within communities. Four, sustenance of key non-pharmaceutical interventions that would apply nationwide and include the following. A, ban of gatherings of more than 20 people outside of a workplace. B, relaxation of restriction on places of worship based on guidelines issued by the Presidential Task Force and protocols agreed by the state governments. C, manage access to markets and locations of economic activity to limit the risk of transmission. D, ban on interstate travels except for movement of agriculture, produce, petroleum products, manufactured goods, and essential services. E, continuous mandatory use of non-medical face masks in public places. F, mandatory provision of hand washing facilities and sanitizers in all public places. G, extensive temperature checks in public places. H, maintaining social distancing, about two meters between people in public places. I, strengthening infection prevention and control at healthcare facilities. J, isolation of the vulnerable population, elderly and those with underlying health conditions. And K, massive information and education campaigns. The fifth, being deepening of collaboration efforts with the community leaders, civil society, faith-based organizations, traditional institutions, etc. And six, continuous mobilization of state governments to take up greater role in the implementation of the guidelines and advisories provided by the Presidential Task Force. Seven, continued provision of support by the Nigerian Center for Disease Control to states through guidelines to shape decision making in responding to high burden local governments and wards in the various states. And eight, easing the total lockdown of Kano State and introduction of phase one of the ease lockdowns. Ladies and gentlemen, this is still a fight for life. And our advancement to phase two does not mean that COVID-19 has ended. It is still potent and highly wasteful 